So, DSP, in his infinite wisdom, during his level 1 podcast, is complaining about the mechanics in Baldur's Gate 3, yet again, because even after, what is it, like 80 hours he's been on this game, he still can't understand the basic, the most basic of concepts in this game. Absolutely amazing. Let's get right into it. Thank you to Snort Hogan for finding this and putting it on his channel. Link in the description. Well, let me tell you something, brother. Snort, snort, snort. Hogan. Drip, snort, snort. I got the drip. Go. I received a $25 tip from One Minute Man. And he he's talking about Baldur's Gate 3. Let's see what he has to say, but let's get him on the leaderboard first. Okay. He says, it may surprise you that I mention this. I've noticed that in Baldur's Gate 3 combat, you always complain, rightfully so, over team's limited movement, uh, limited, limited range of movement. One of the reasons is that you neglected the athlete ability. You're doing fine with spells, persuasion, charisma, sleight of hand, but agility not so much. That's the corner you have painted yourself into. It's not the game. No, it's the game. Absolutely amazing. So, one minute, man. Like, details, point by point what he has to, what he's been doing what he's been actually doing right and what he's been doing and neglecting neglecting in the game and immediately he just goes nope nope not me i didn't make any mistakes it's the game's fault you've played these types of games before i mean i don't think you finished them you played knights of the old republic you played divinity 2 although you didn't finish i know for a fact you didn't finish that one like, it, these are complex games. They have a whole lot of minutia. If you don't want to play them, just don't. Because the game made the system like that, not me. I didn't code the game, right? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll compare this to... I'll give you a perfect comparison, okay? Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3. Out of those three games, one of the three is universally panned because of a certain system that everyone hates. The other two don't have the problem, okay? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? In the original Dark Souls trilogy, one of the games is universally criticized for having a bad mechanic that everyone hates. Why people don't like Dark Souls 2? Would you like me to list it alphabetically or chronologically? How about the, the elevator that goes up into a lava world? How about the slow hitboxes? How about it being too linear for a Souls game? How about too, way too many bosses? How, many, how about too many bosses that are just larger humans? The fucking life gems. Bad iframes of mediocre story. It was the B team, not the A team. The, the graphics were... I played Dark Souls 2 recently. The graphics do not hold up as well as Dark Souls 1, which is fucking amazing. The emphasis on the darkness, which it, it's a cool mechanic for Dark Souls, but then it makes the game so unplayable you can't see shit. Even worse in PC quests and in the original games, you think the quests are obscure and convoluted in Dark Souls? No. The world system, you, f you f go five feet, it looks like... It looks like you went halfway across the damn world. Did, did I miss something? Anything? And it's very frustrating. And it was removed for Dark Souls 3. It wasn't in Dark Souls 1. It was added to Dark Souls 2. And then it was removed for Dark Souls 3. Thank you very much. SAS just figured it out. ADP. Now, what does that mean? Is it adaptability or something like that? What it stands for? I I don't really listen to a whole bunch of negative shit for video games because it's like, if I like the game, I like it. I don't care what people say. And if I don't like the game, I don't like it. I don't care what people say. But I don't really remember people saying much about the ADP. I could be wrong. You know, we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt. It's ADP. It's ADP. Um, There is a mechanic in Dark Souls 2 that's a stat that you have to upgrade in order to roll. To roll, the critical thing you need to do to survive in any action game, a dodge. You actually have to waste time leveling up that stat to just dodge. I know this motherfucker did not just say you need to level ADP to roll in Dark Souls 2. You went full retard, man. Never go full retard. Y'all are making me... This motherfucker is making me reload, download Dark Souls 2, isn't he? 
Here we are in Dark Souls. <laughs> Made a new character. What do you think is gonna happen when I hit the B button, guys? Holy crap, it dodged! Holy crap, it rolled! I ain't even level yet! That's amazing, dude! How is this possible, DSP? How? I thought... I thought this was impossible. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard, right? It's dumb as shit. And it shouldn't be in there. In Dark Souls 1, you can roll. In Dark Souls 3, you can roll. In Sekiro, you can dodge. In Bloodborne, you can dodge. The only game you can't do it unless you waste time leveling it is Dark Souls 2. Okay? Now... Now, if we are to look at the Dark Souls 2 wiki and their adaptability, we can see what adaptability actually does. It raises poison bonus. It raises poison, bleed, petrify, curse resistances. It raises agility. It raises poise. Slightly HP. Soft cap is 39. Using healing items becomes faster. Shield raising becomes faster. The big end begins with slowest. <clears throat> and here we see what DSP is actually talking about, the point he's actually trying to make. Raising adaptability yields a greater number of invincibility frames during a row, but does not actually change the animation. So a roll, let's just say, takes a full second. When your adaptability is low, like 50% of that you have invincibility frames for. And when you raise adaptability, you get more and more. That's all it does. You can still dodge. You can use, still use it as a quick backup. You just have to... It's a stupid mechanic. Like, don't get me wrong. It's dumb. But you can still roll. It's still... It's still... It, it just works. I definitely understand that a lot of people are going to say, well, this isn't a fair comparison. Well, in my mind, it is. Your mind is a crazy place that no one should ever venture into. In Baldur's Gate 3, everyone moves like a slug. Unless, for example, like Carlac, for some reason, has this amazing ability to go insanely long with movement every single turn. And that makes her one of the best, you know, melee fighters. Um, there's ways around it. Like, for example, Asterion is great at range, so you don't need the the the, uh, the movement. He can basically just get to a range of any enemy and just snipe the crap out of them, right? The idea with a sorcerer is that they should have great range with their spells, and therefore that doesn't matter, okay? But the problem here is... You're a bunch of adventurers. You're all out there surviving against un insurmountable odds. You're all supposed to be badasses. But you can't walk more than two feet? <laughs> On what fucking universe? Oh, the D&D &D universe. Well, then the D&D &D universe is outdated and annoying. Pot, meat, kettle. But on a much more serious note, it is a turn-based game. You're not supposed to be able to go halfway across the board in one turn. A turn is basically five or six seconds. How far can you go in five or six seconds, you fat fuck? These are people, adventurers, wearing, in often cases, full plate mail, wearing, we carrying weapons that are bigger than themselves. They are not, <laughs> unless they respect for that, they're not going to move that fast. Hell, you can look and fuck. You just spoke of Dark Souls. Yeah, I'm not replaying Dark Souls just to get this part, so I'm just ripping off the internet. Here we find, in Dark Souls 1... The first instance where we meet Havel the Rock. Havel the Rock is a badass adventurer. He has a giant club. He has armor that's so big, you, you don't even deal damage to him if he's blocking. And look how slow he's going. He, 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 you can backstab him easily. He has a very crappy roll. Why? Because his armor's so heavy. Because his shit's so heavy. And it just, it just slows you down. The same can be said in Boulder's game. Because we're trying to play a video game. This is not real life where you get exhausted if you walk down the street because you're not physically fit. This is a video game. <laughs> Did this motherfucker really say to the internet that he gets exhausted if he has to walk down the street? My god. Fantasy. Your character should actually have some level of, like, fucking wind so they can walk longer than fucking three meters before they stub their toe and fall over. Right? Right? That's the whole point. It's fantasy, not reality. Every video game, every fantasy setting has to follow its own rules. 
this is, yes, this is a fantasy world, but it still has physics. It still has mechanics. You can't just run 50 miles in full plate mail and not expect to get exhausted unless you spec for that. And like it's one ice cream man, or whatever the fuck his name was, I already forget. And as one minute man said, you can spec for that by getting the athlete trait to, athlete trait to make you more physically capable. But they're going for this hyper statistic based game where it's like you, I should be focusing I'm a sorcerer what should I be focusing on my spell casting abilities buffing those abilities getting better spells better levels on the spells things to buff the spells I shouldn't be worrying about oh my guy's a, a sissy ninny who can't walk four feet now I have to put a bunch of points into my fucking my, my athletic skill you're a sorcerer you shouldn't have to be athletic you should literally hover above and fly anywhere you fucking want because you're a sorcerer you just said five seconds ago, sorcerers did not really have to worry about the movement in combat because they have long range spells. So what's, why are you complaining that a sorcerer now needs athletes, athletics to move further in combat? You just said they don't need that. Make up your mind, pick a lane. Right? You're a fucking melee fighter. You're supposed to be the best tanking fighter in the game, like Lazel. But she can't go too far She's exhausted. She's carrying a sword that's bigger than her fucking body, right? She can attack 17 times in a row and behead multiple people in a turn, but she can't walk more than three meters. In almost every video game, there is a difference be be between being able to deal damage and agility and movement and defense. You just said, you just said she's wearing full plate with a weapon bigger than she is. Obviously, that's going to drag it down a little bit, even if you train for it. Going back to Dark Souls 2, here we see a cleric character. As you can see, he's not very good with his mace. Uh, he does not have the stats to effectively yield it, as signified by the axe in the bottom left corner of the weapon. Now, in real life, you would expect that if you keep swinging your weapon, eventually, you would gain the strength necessary to wield it properly. That is not the case of video games. You need to level up. You need to spin the stats to do it. The game does not know how you want to make your character. You have to actually make it in game. Please don't make me have to open up Dark Souls 2 again. Thank you. It's too tough. Too hard for her. Above her pay grade. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense because the game's based on these confining statistics that make it less fun. If you like a universe where everything is confined by statistics, okay, this is definitely the game for you. But at some point, as gamers, we have to realize that actually the confines of this makes it not as fun, right? For you, do not speak for everyone when you just mean it's a personal preference. This gets you into so much shit. Just stop doing it, okay? Like, like... This is Deep Rock Galactic. You take the uh, you take the role of a dwarf. You go down into a onto the planet. You mine some minerals. You go back, and it's just rinse, repeat that same mission cycle over and over again. Some people don't like that. A lot of people do. Just because it's not for you, it's not for everyone. Games like Baldur's Gate has some mechanics like the turn-based system that some people don't like. That's perfectly fine. If it's not for you, but don't say everyone has to hate it. Don't say everyone doesn't like this game. Some people like this. Some people like real-time strategies. It's um, Don't just say, don't say it's like a, an objective fact when it's just your personal fucking opinion. This would seriously be way more fun if it would be a little bit less strict and a little bit more loose and a little bit more, hey, let's just enjoy it. Rather than, uh-oh, it's a fight. New enemy type. Here's the new stat that you have to now learn. And they have this new ability that you didn't know about. And now half your things don't work in this fight. And by the way, your limited movement. Oh, you can't see. Oh, by the way, the the Earth is rotating slightly more, more fast today. So because of that, all of your, your ranged abilities curve to the left. So be sure to calculate the wind velocity so that everything will hit properly. And by the way, just so you know, Karlak ate a bad bean burrito for breakfast. So she's going to be shitting half the time. And she misses half her turns. Oh, Okay, go, fight. What? That's, that's Baldur's Gate 3, man. <laughs> yes, Baldur's Gate 3 adds new mechanics to new enemies. 
That's generally what people call variety, so that the game doesn't get dull and stale and boring after 80 plus hours. Why are you saying that like it's a bad thing? And also, guess what? In Dark Souls, your arrows have limited range. If you try to shoot something farther than your range, it just drops to the ground. Do you complain about that? Do you complain about that because that's too realistic, too statistic based? I don't know. Again, for some people, people are, oh, I love that. I absolutely love that. For me, it's like, I'll tolerate it, but I'm going to criticize it. And I have a right to criticize it and say, I don't like that. Then don't play the game. If you don't like the game, if you don't like the mechanics, if you don't like the combat, if you don't like the turn base, just don't play it. But he has to because it's the only game right now that's bringing in the money. If I were to play a real-time strategy game, like Total War or Age of Empires or some shit like that, would you think it would be fair that I complain about the turn-based strategy? Oh, I have to build my troops? Why don't I just make up? Why don't I just have a full army all the time? Er, ber, der, ber, der. No, that's unrealistic. That's stupid because that's the game you were signing up for. In much the same way as Baldur's, this is the, in much the same way, this is what you signed up for when you played Baldur's Gate. You knew what you were getting into. Again, you've played this type of game before. You rage quit them before. Why do you think, like, the only reason you're in this is because it got Game of the Year, people clamored to see it, and you thought it was going to be a cash cow, and you thought it would be done by now. But it's a long game, and you keep, and you're a very slow gamer, so it's probably going to last another 80 fucking hours for you. Right? No, I'm I'm 87 hours into this game. My character should walk further than three steps. I don't care if you're the most decrepit idiot. You're an adventurer at this point. You should have figured something out. Now I had to waste time sinking points into a stat that's meaningless just to walk a little further. Just like in Dark Souls 2. No one should have to waste statistic points, leveling points, to roll. It's a fucking action game. If you can't roll, you might as well not play it. But that's how they built it and everyone hates it. Right? It's the same thing here, man. But again, for some reason, people who are totally into the whole simming art role-playing, I guess you're just so used to it, right? Yes, like I said earlier, if you want your character to behave in a certain way, the game does not know how you want it to work. If, if you want the character to move faster, put the points in the level that makes you move faster. If you want your character to swing harder, put the points in the character to make you swing harder. Uh, you can't just have have it all the ways, dude. I'm sure it's the same in real D&D. Right? And I, to me, that's like, that would drive me nuts. No wonder you got D&D games that have been running for 20 years. It probably took them five years to be able to walk down the street. <laughs> like, holy shit, man. No, that is not how it works in real D&D. And there are games that last 20 plus years because people have groups of friends that they like to play the game with and they like to see the DM's world and the DM's story and they want to see their characters grow. And, they, and sometimes they just like to hang out with their friends and play a game. Something you would never know because you push everyone who you, who you used to be able to call a friend away. Good job. All right. Anyway, I appreciate your input. Uh, one minute, man. And again, if people have recommendations on how to improve my party, I'm all ears. Unless it's about actually using the game mechanics to level up your character in a way to cover these shortfalls, right? Except for that, then we're going to laugh at you for 20 minutes. Anyway, that's going to be it for me. If you enjoy the video, let me know. I might do more of this crap in the future because uh, DSP is such an interesting specimen until next time take care fuckers bye